Hi, I'm Eli Prinson from HybridVocalTechnique.com. Uh, today's video is going to be a vocal analysis of Steve Walsh from the band Kansas. Okay, now he's not with Kansas anymore, but he's the voice um, that is associated with most of the hits from the heyday of Kansas. Okay, so most notably, uh, the most universally known song with Steve Walsh singing in Kansas is. Uh, carry on wayward son just an absolute you know you can't it's unmistakable when you hear it it's like, oh that's Kansas that's Steve Walsh right now I've seen several vocal coaches talk about this and do isolated um, analysis and things like that but I've been asked so many times to do this in the comments of a lot of my videos that I figured I'd go ahead and do it okay so let's check it out I have the isolated tracks and uh, let's get right to it okay Carry on my wayward son, there'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest, don't you cry no more. All right, <laughs> just classic, right? Classic, all right? Just by itself, amazing. Three-part harmony, uh, lead vocal right in the middle, belted up to tenor C. You know, and in the headphones especially, just, oh, just like a wall of sound, just three voices. I had to laugh, though, because um, I never picked that up <laughs> listening to the song. And that's the cool thing. When you listen to isolated vocal tracks, you pick up on things you would never dream of um, for a number of different reasons. But this one part where he says, uh, lay your weary head to rest, <laughs> sounds like Elmer Fudd. Check this out. Lay your weary head to rest, don't you cry no more. I know that's ridiculous, but I couldn't help myself. All right, let's continue. Ah. Can you hear the organ in your head, just like me? I mean, it's like your brain filling in the blanks. That harmony is so tight in your mind, you can, you can hear the organ going, check it out. Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion Right there I could hear just a touch of what I call in HVT, hybrid vocal technique, what I teach. I can hear just a little bit of what I call sobbing in the mask. Other systems will call that cry technique or sob or wail or weep. Um, we call it sobbing in the mask for HVT because, in HVT because we place it a little bit different. But uh, just listen to him sing this first line. You can hear a little bit of it. It's not much. It's very subtle. A glimpse beyond this illusion. Fusion. Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion. I was soaring ever higher. But I flew too high. Though my eyes could see, I still was a blind man. Though my mind could think, I still was a madman. Okay, right there I'm hearing a nice breath stop. Okay, breath stop just means when you're singing to uh, maintain um, better support, you try not to let all the air come rushing out. So you reserve the air by softening the consonants a little bit. And you can hear him doing that. Check it out. I'll try to back it up just right. Too high. Right here. Though my eyes could see, I still was a blind man. Though my mind could think, I still was a madman. I hear the voices when I'm dreaming. I can hear them say, carry on my Nice belting right up to, to tenor C, outstanding. And you can hear all that. You can hear he's, um, his voice is a little, set a little bit higher than mine naturally in his speech. Most singers <laughs> from back then aren't kind of, but um, he's not, he doesn't sound like he's using head voice or mixing his registers. He's just going, going all in on it and it sounds excellent. Masquerading as a man with a reason my charade is the event of the season. And if I claim to be a wise man, well, 
It surely means that I don't know On the stormy sea of moving emotion Tossed about I'm like a ship on the ocean I set a course for winds of fortune But I hear the voices say All right, I'm hearing so many techniques that I use as a singer and that I teach it's absolutely crazy. Um, and the, and I didn't learn these from Steve Walsh. I learned them from my, my vocal coach, but um, I'm hearing a lot of what I call, uh, or it's a little saying we would use just to, it was kind of silly. It's called, it is your friend, I, I-H. It's, um, it's writing a favorable vowel sound uh, to keep the voice up in the mask, okay? Those of you that study HVT know exactly what I'm talking about, but listen to this whole section here. Even though there are different vowels, you can hear that sound um, kind of floating all the way through there. And it's a, a very, very uh, good placement trick that we use in hybrid vocal technique um, for, for getting better height and um, better forward placement while you sing. And it allows you to, to maintain a favorable placement. Um, it gives you a better chance of singing stuff high like this in your chest voice. Be a wise man, wise well, man. it surely means that I don't know On the stormy sea of moving emotion Tossed about I'm like a ship on the ocean I set a course for winds of fortune But I hear the voices say Carry on my wayward son There'll be peace when you are done Lay your weary head to Okay. There's um a lot there's some really cool stuff here. I am so happy <laughs> that I decided to listen to this isolated because I'm hearing so much that I never heard for decades and decades of listening to this to this stuff. I'm hearing so much that you can't hear while the tracks are playing. There's some um there's so much technique in here and I don't know Steve Walsh's background. I don't know if he had vocal training or if he just emulated really good singers that did have vocal training or just had good natural technique. I don't know. All I know is I'm happy <laughs> that he sang in Kansas because it's, it's awesome, right? But I'm hearing so much stuff, so much stuff. A lot of the stuff that I teach, it's like, you know, sometimes good singers stumble across great technique one way or another, whether it's taught to them or they just get lucky. But I'm hearing things like, uh, for instance, there's a lot of placement tricks, placement tricks. This is stuff I teach in hybrid vocal technique, like crazy. And uh, I'll just let you know, or I'll show you something, hang on. But I hear the voices say, the ocean, I set a course for winds of fortune. But I hear the voices say, Carry on my wayward son Toss about I'm like a ship on the ocean On the stormy sea of moving emotion Toss about I'm like a ship on the ocean I set a course for winds of fortune There's so much it in there Toss about I'm like a ship it on ship, ship on the ocean I set a course for winds of fortune even though fortune, you know, think about it. We do not pronounce everything literally. <laughs> a ship on the ocean. <laughs> I sent a course for winds of fortune. We don't do that, right? If you listen to his voice, you can hear what I call a split, a split modification. It is a mixture of a vowel modification and a modification for placement. And he does this with I and if I said, ooh, it would sound like fortune, but he doesn't do that. If you notice when Steve Walsh sings an ooh vowel, there's always some shine on it. There's always some resonance. There's some overtones. He places the ooh vowel the same way that I teach, the same way that I do it. All right. I know the secrets. Ha <laughs> fortune. But I hear the voices say Split mod I -I. Carry on my wayward son There'll be peace when you are done Lay your weary head to rest Don't you 
Okay, now that part, okay, again, he doesn't go any higher, even though it sounds like super, super, super high, in context and in reality, it is high because he belts the whole thing. He's in, he's, he is belting this. I hate to break people's hearts out there, out there that think that everything is head voice, but he doesn't go any higher than tenor C, but it's, it's in what I consider to be full voice. Okay, so he's way up here. And um, there's a couple things about the range in this song I wanna mention that are pretty funny. It's kind of psychological. It's like the psychological part of singing. All right, so let's listen to this part again. This is like my favorite part of the, of the song and it has a lot to do with, uh, with what I was talking about earlier. Now your life's no longer empty. Surely heaven waits for Okay, hear that ooh vowel. Now, it's a little, I think the tape, you know, because back then when they recorded the tape, sometimes it can be just a hair off of being like, like the tuning might seem like it's just a, you know, a, a scent off sometimes. Um, but basically it's right in here when he says, uh, surely heaven waits for you. When he says four, it does not sound like four, like or, oh, oh. Right, he's he's uh, he's modified that vowel in a different way than you would think about doing um, with standard vowel modification. That's why I love these. I I can't say it enough. I love these isolated tracks. Let's listen one more time. I'll show you what he does, but let's see if you can figure it out on your own. Okay. okay. All right. So way up here belting this. Not everybody can do that without a high voice. I can because I've trained, all right? So I'm gonna show you what he's doing, okay? He says, surely heaven waits for you. Now, for does not sound like, if you didn't know the lyrics, you might not know what the heck he's saying because instead of doing an O, he sounds more like he's doing an A. Ah. Surely heaven waits for, ah, like A, ah, like a hat but with the shape of his mouth like this, there's something else going on, all right? So, surely heaven waits for you. And the vowel on the on the ooh, all right? The ooh is not a throaty ooh, because that initiates a multitude of cracks and probably has a, a billion times with this song throughout the decades, all right? So let's, uh, so that part right there, C and B. Surely heaven waits for Hear that? It's not four. It's it's like ah, and you're shaping a little bit. Surely heaven waits for you. Okay. So ooh, there's a brain trick going on there. All right. I'll go ahead and give you a freebie here. I'll give you a freebie. We do this in hybrid vocal technique. If you think in your mind certain spellings of a word as if it was misspelled, you could trick your brain into placing differently. Okay, so if you say two words here, if I said shoe, right? Shoe, ooh, ooh, boo, boo. It's very throaty on the same vowel, ooh. Now, if I say you or a few, ooh, 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 it's almost like ew, something stinks, right? Ew, but there's not that much squeeze on it. So if I tried to sing way up there, with literal sounds. <laughs> What's the lyrics? Surely heaven waits for. Surely heaven waits for. You can't uh, singing for or an or is going to be so hard to get up in there and to get it placed and ride through those lyrics. All right. So because we train vowel modification, most teachers will do them one by one, and you have to learn them that way. I understand that, but once you start singing you quickly realize not everything is on mum, right? So mix is not always optimal once you have lyrics. 
okay? A lot of things are kind of like hit, hit and miss once you put them consonants in there. So you've got to deal with them. You got to deal with your placements. It's super important, super important if you want to sing stuff like this and stuff even harder than this, right? So thinking a different spelling or a different way of saying a, a vowel that's more throaty, a darker, throatier vowel, if you think of it a different way, you can place it like an easier vowel. You can place it in the mask. And that's what I call split modification. And we do this in HVT, okay? So again, shoe, boo, or you, few, a few, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then you dial it in just right. Surely ever waits for you. Okay? And I, do you hear this voice? Listen to this voice. Hey, what's up, guys? Baritone. Baritone. All right? No edits. You don't see me click, click. I'm going to show you mix, click, click, click. You don't see any edits. All right? I belted this. This was this low voice brought up here in full modality one, full chest voice. I'm not saying you have to use it all the time, but you, <laughs> if I can do it, anyone can do it, okay? And I teach, I teach everything in hybrid vocal technique, belting, mixed voice, head voice, all of it, okay? If you're interested in hybrid vocal technique, there's plenty of links in the description. You can um, study with me online, become a member, get my entire library of HVT training content, everything, okay? Just Check it all out if you're interested. But let's let's finish this up. Um, I want to show you a couple things here. Carry on my way, set to rest. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. Okay. So not no. Not head voice. Sorry. He's, he's, he's going full out. He's gunning that. You can hear him. You can hear some of the strand there. There's a little touch of grit in there, right? He's full on. He's belting, all right? And that is a B for it. All right, he's up there. Now, one last thing I wanted to say about this, and we'll wrap this up, is that um, everyone acts like that's the hardest part of the song to sing. And that's actually not the highest part of the song. It's, it's kind of psychological, right? The highest this song goes is tenor C, and then these no more yelling and extended notes are B-force, okay? So Steve Walsh, amazing, love you, man, incredible. Thank you for, for being you and for singing so amazingly and enriching all of our lives. Thank you for that. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this today. If so, hit the like button. If you like more of this, hit subscribe. Check out the content. If you're, in HV, if you're into vocal training, check out HVT. And also check out our new podcast, The Visual Vocalist. Link's in the description. Have a wonderful day. See ya.